Version 2.1 of Crisis Remastered was introduced on the PC recently, and as we saw in Alex's video, it introduced a whole host of improvements. But this time, we're talking the console version, because the latest iteration of Crisis Remastered on console updates the game to support the profiles for next generation systems. The big question here though, is whether or not we can finally play Crisis at 60 frames per second on a console. That has always been the dream, and well, now we actually have an answer to that question, and that answer is slightly complicated. But of course, there are many details to discuss, and I felt that we needed to go through all of those different elements, and to do this, I've brought in the one and only, the crisis expert, Alex Battaglia. Hey there, John. Excited to talk about crisis as always. Good news and bad, I'm here. So what will we be discussing? Well, essentially, I'm going to start by kicking off with what the new patch actually brings to the console version, as well as discuss what's missing. Uh, then we will go through each of the three graphics modes on both Series mm -hmm. X and Series S to understand the performance profile. Now you'll note that I've only mentioned those consoles and the reason is simple. We're actually looking at this patch pre-release. Crytek had the option to push out this patch to my Xbox consoles early. However, the feature they used to do this does not exist on the PlayStation side, so I was not able to update the PS4 version running on PS5 to the latest patch, which means when that version does release publicly, that's when we'll be able to take a look at it. So check back on that later if you're curious about that one. Okay, so we're looking at the Xbox versions. What's new? Well, Alex, I think the big thing that was added to the PC version uh, is Ascension. Yeah, this essentially was the missing level uh, was never included in the original Xbox 360 PS3 release of Crisis back in the day. Uh, was not there for launch in Crisis Remastered due to the fact that all versions of this game are based partially, and actually, well, I should say partially for a large part, uh, on that original PS3 and Xbox 360 code, or at least the levels uh, and, and the way they were imported back then. But now, on PC, we have Ascension brought back, uh, for the most part, uh, completely on PC and also now on console, which is pretty awesome because this has never been on console before and I'm really curious to see what the audience actually thinks of this level. Yeah, and I can say it actually plays really well on a gamepad, so mm -hmm. it does control well. I think it adds some additional context to the game that bridges the end of the mission where you're escaping to the beginning of the aircraft carrier, so it's a good addition. Uh, also, I noticed they have the option for classic suit controls on console, and That's it's mapped cool. to the L1. Wow. This may have been introduced earlier, I'm actually not sure, because I only remember the original release version, because I mostly play this on PC as well. But the way it works is really nice. You hold the L bumper, and it brings up the four options, and you simply hit one of the face buttons that corresponds to the option. So it's actually very quick to switch in and out. It's pretty much just as quick as it is on PC, really. So It's not bad. It's uh, good. I guess the one thing is that you probably can't do very well, maybe, is you can't maybe do a, like a quick run and then a quick power jump. I don't even know how... Does it like maintain your momentum while you hit LB? You can still, so you can still move while holding LB and nice. you can still hit the button. So that is fine. That's the only cool. problem is that obviously to hit that button, you can't be using the right analog stick, at least not easily. So yeah. momentarily, at least you have to give up being able to look <laughs> and hit the corresponding well, button. Unless you're one of those three armed monsters that mastered the N64 controller, you know, you could probably. Or played a lot of Monster Hunter on PSP. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Another improvement actually kind of comes down to the way the game feels to play. At 30 FPS on the last gen machines, the controls felt rather leggy, I thought, but mm -hmm. this has been pretty much solved, I think, with this new version. The game feels uh, mostly very responsive now. It's not quite like Call of Duty level per se, but it's, it is responsive. I feel it's much easier to play than it was before and much more satisfying to play as well, so they definitely improved the response of the game. Though some of this may just be down to the increased frame rate. For sure. Beyond this, they also fixed a bunch of bugs throughout. There's a lot of stuff from fixing various crash bugs to re-implementing certain other missing visual effects, like the dust debris that appears in the mine, or fixing the missing fog particles that were in the first cutscene. 
Various other visual tweaks are there as well, not to mention other bugs such as things like disappearing characters and the like. So it's basically more stable and feels more polished overall. And of course, loading also benefits from the faster consoles as well. Uh, unfortunately, not everything has been fixed here. Uh, in your video, you mentioned the fence posts, which in the original game, they kind of split apart individually. It's and amazing. Remastered. Yeah. They did not. Uh, they fixed that on PC, mm -hmm. but they did not bring that over to the console version. <sighs> yeah. Unfortunately. The other thing, uh, volumetric clouds in Ascension that were added on the PC. They added this feature to PC. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't implement it in all the old missions, sadly, but yeah. it is in Ascension. Those clouds are not present on the console, so that's, the mission uh, itself looks different. That's a, little, that's a weird one for me because we know back in the day that uh, Crisis running on 2007 GPUs, or even you know GPUs that came up before, crisis uh, at very low frame rates can 100% run those type of volumetric clouds. They're they're pretty low res. Um, it is a little surprising to see them not at all enabled on consoles when, especially when we're looking at these next gen consoles, which can 100% run this kind of... Uh, My guess stuff. is that Saber Interactive, who did the console ports, simply didn't implement that feature in the console yeah. version, and so it's just not there. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, I guess, you're familiar with this one, and this is still a problem on PC, it's mm -hmm. the vegetation stuff, right? Yeah, the time slicing, as you're, as we call it. Uh, essentially, um, depending upon... It's a little bit weird, because it's different for almost each bit of vegetation you walk up to, uh, but the, the frame rate of the physicalized interaction of the foliage moving due to physical interactions like Nomad running into it, enemies running into it, or anything like that, shooting the foliage, uh, is either like 30 FPS, some of it almost looks like 15 FPS, or it's 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 like really weird. Uh, but that that was never really fixed on PC in any uh, great sense of the word, and uh, definitely not here on console, unfortunately as well. And same explosions, uh, which impacted foliage on PC, they don't mm -hmm. do it still in this version, and that's also the same on PC. So basically, it's like all the things you pointed out that were still kind of not completely solved. There's still an issue here, plus the fence post and the vol volumetric clouds aren't here. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. I mean, you know, we could probably dig in even more into the nitty gritty Way more. here. Yeah. But it's still fundamentally the same as Crisis Remastered was previously on console in terms of overall visual fidelity. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's what you can expect. I should also mention that I did encounter a strange little bug specifically on Series X where I could not enable HDR. It was enabled at the system level, it works with other games, no problem, but with Crisis, uh, it only appeared as a grayed out X here in the menu, and I couldn't use it. So that was slightly bizarre, since it actually does work on Xbox One X. But now I think, Alex, uh, let's actually, what I'm going to do here is we're going to kind of combine the performance and the visual quality that sounds like a good uh, idea. talk into a single section here, because this is the main meat of this discussion. So each version of the game has three modes, a performance mode, a quality mode, and the ray tracing mode. A bit like uh, the uh, kind of pro consoles last time around, Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And these these all existed on those machines anyway, but this time uh, when you play these on the next-gen machines, you actually get uh, enhanced features, which is mostly just uncapping the frame rate, bumping up the res on certain things, that kind of stuff. But the yeah. question is, does it actually hit it? So quality mode. Um, this is this is the big one. So quality mode uncaps the frame rate, targets 60 frames per second, and uh, it runs at a maximum of 2160p or native 4K. Not bad. Of course, dynamic resolution scaling is in effect. So you know, I found things like 1800p and even lower actually in many scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it is variable. Uh, I saw one like under 1440p as well. I think it was. But That's, still, by and large, it is very crisp and it looks nice, which is great. Yeah, with with this game's TAA, it, it should actually be a rather stable and good-looking exactly. image. Exactly. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, I first played it, though, on my LG C10 or CX OLED, and I had VRR enabled, a variable mm -hmm. refresh rate, and was like, wow, okay, this is very stable. This is great. And then I actually went to <laughs> capture it and I started playing <laughs> it, and I was like... Wait a minute, what's going on here? I could immediately see that it wasn't completely stable. And sure enough, as you can see from the frame rate graph, uh, it's not quite there. Like, it's close. It's close. But you often get these minor drops just below 60 FPS, and sometimes even more, actually, when things really kick up. 
So it doesn't uh, feel quite as good as I had hoped, I would say. It's uh, interesting. Yeah, you know, like you would, it's always one of those things with um, kind of uh, dynamic resolution scaling. Uh, it's just because a game has dynamic resolution scaling doesn't mean it can get rid of every single uh, GPU related performance drop, uh, depending upon how quickly dynamic res changes or what the lower th the lowest threshold is for dynamic res, like the lowest resolution, uh, it can still drop frames. So I guess in this case, John, it's almost like the dynamic res is not uh, as uh, aggressive as it might I, be. I actually think it's similar to the problem we initially pointed out and it was fixed on Xbox One X, where mm -hmm. I think the threshold is set uh, slightly too high so that mm -hmm. essentially what happens with dynamic res scaling is you know when you hit a certain like say gpu time a render time for a single frame if it if it goes over like a set threshold it's like okay if i'm over 10 milliseconds uh start to reduce the resolution basically to get it down that's the that's the concept mm -hmm. but you can you can adjust that you can kind of set where it starts to adjust the resolution you could say well if it's uh if it pops over like 14 milliseconds just yeah. theoretical here. The problem is, though, is that if it doesn't catch it on time or it's not, you know, it's like if it's too close to the 16.7 target, uh, you actually get noticeable dips. And that's kind of yeah. what it feels like happening here. So mm -hmm. it does kind of just in a lot of these instances it's just dropping below. So I think the solution here, at least for me, is the resolution needs to be reduced and the or at least more often, which is to say, the, the dynamic resolution scaler isn't aggressive enough. Now, they yeah. could leave it alone for VRR displays because it looks perfect there, but uh, for everybody else, it would be nice to be able to reduce that a little bit. So That, that would be nice, yeah. That would solve the problem. But there is actually a reduced resolution mode, and that's performance mode, which tops out at 1080p. Um, and this mode is pretty good, I'd say. Pretty smooth. Yeah. It would, it would surprise me if there were actually drops. What are those drops that you ended up well, noticing, John? Be surprised then. <laughs> uh, there are a few, there's a, there's a few drops, but mainly in uh, the village here when <sighs> dealing with the tanks. Uh, just some minor momentary drops. I mean, this is certainly one of the heaviest scenes in the entire game. So it is, it is actually a brutal sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say, you know, by and large, unlike the other mode, Without VRR enabled, you you do get a very very stable overall frame rate. So if you're mm -hmm. if you're looking for stability, even in missions like Ascension, uh, and any of the busy stuff, the scenes with the tank, uh, whatever the fifth mission I think it is, where you're driving the tank across the countryside. Oh, oh, uh, 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 onslaught. Yeah, onslaught. Exactly, onslaught. Love is that. Totally level. smooth, no problems there. Uh, so yeah, I mean. It's essentially, are you willing to take the performance hit? And I should note, mm -hmm. by the way, and this is interesting, the HUD resolution actually scales <laughs> yeah. with render resolution. <laughs> that so is interesting. It, it, whatever your maximum render resolution is, is what the HUD will render at. So that's something mm. to note. Um, lastly, then, there's the ray tracing mode. And this one's interesting because uh, this actually was bumped up to a maximum of 1440p, which is both wow. reflected in the okay. HUD and in the pixel counts. So, honestly, but it, obviously it's still DRS, so, you know, you get like 1360-something under that, and sometimes even mm -hmm. lower than that, down to 1080p and the like. So it is it is variable, but it's, it's higher than the actual performance mode, and it does look really nice. So this is an improvement. The problem, though, is that it is uh, actually less stable than the quality mode. And huh. in some of the forest battles, like this section here, you can see it's actually not very stable at all, I would argue. Uh, and That's... again, VRR kind of helps make up the slack because it usually stays above 40, which is the VRR window. But I feel like once you get under 50, you can still sort of feel that yeah, the frame rate's dropping. Yeah, you can start dropping. noticing like, yeah, it's, it's not as like great as like uh, dips down to like 54 or 52 or something like that. You know, like the difference in actual like frame time between 50 and 60 frames per second is actually not too great. But when you start getting into like that 20 millisecond territory, it's, it's more obvious, you know? So yeah, I mean, basically um, the system just can't fully cope with, with this mm -hmm. and lock to 60. Uh, so this is what we get. But obviously, you know, this is still running in backwards compatibility mode, so it's not a mm -hmm. native port to these systems. So I guess the verdict on Series X then is pretty simple, I think. 
If you have a VRR capable screen, just go with quality mode. It'll basically look flawless. If you don't, then I would suggest performance mode unless you're not actually sensitive to those frame rate dips, in which case, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the ray tracing mode is neat, but actually the least performant of the three. So yeah. I think we can say the 60 FPS dream on console is technically realized, especially in performance mode, but it is not 100% there. Yeah, yeah. I think in this case, like you described, as we talked about the quality mode earlier, uh, the thing that would make the Series X version uh, even more perfect would be almost if every single mode, maybe not performance mode because it's more or less there, uh, but quality in RT mode had much more aggressive um, kind of dynamic resolution targets. Yeah, I think I really think that's just that's it. That's it. That's all you really need is the dynamic mm -hmm. resolution needs to be more aggressive. And I think with that, it would pretty much solve it because to me, the performance mode demonstrates that the game is really not CPU limited anymore, not on these mm -hmm. boxes. So that's with the settings that they're using. Um, so it really is just GPU causing these drops in performance at this point. So yeah, uh, it should also be noted, I guess, that they're not doing. I, I mean, because this is a backwards compatible game, I assume the ray tracing is handled exactly the way it was before, which is to say, it's in software. Just yeah, running in like a compute shader. Essentially. Exactly. No, it's very yeah. clever, though. Very very clever yeah. stuff. Like it's amazing that that even exists and runs on <laughs> those older machines. But it is what it is. But anyway, I now we have to talk about the Xbox Series S. Yeah, this is interesting because we have essentially a much smaller GPU, but the exact same GPU and SSD performance here as we have on Series X. So you would imagine uh, that at lower resolutions, we'd be looking at very similar performance profiles. So how is it like, John? Okay, so Starting quality mode. Quality, yeah. Quality mode on Series S is now capped to 30 frames per second and hmm. targets native 4K. Uh, it actually That's... seems to hold to the higher resolution a little more even than the Series X because the frame rate target is lower. That's surprising though, wow. Okay, but, I didn't expect a 30, uh, okay. Well, targeting 30 makes sense because at 4K, and you know, mm -hmm. Series S is not designed for 4K, so it's already no, kind of no, pushing no, it. No. And well, the reality is, is that it does not hold steady. Uh, it tries, but it, it, it effectively has that same problem that I highlighted on Xbox One X originally with its 4K 30 mode, where again, the, the dynamic resolution scaling isn't quite aggressive enough. So the frame rate often slips below the target. And so you're left with this like slight bit of judder as you play. And they actually fixed huh. this on the One X version. So it is entirely possible this could still be corrected by just adjusting the threshold there. But this mode is not great, I think, in that sense, because the resolution is clearly just a little bit too much for the Series S, and VRR cannot save you when you're at 30 FPS. So, um, pretty pretty cut and dried, I think. That now, is uh, interesting. Okay. It is. I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised, though, that there wasn't... Um that they didn't just think about doing like a quality mode 60 fps but higher than 1080p maybe that's just me dreaming but what is the performance mode like there john well that one then is a 1080p max with yeah. drs of course so it can kind of dip from there mm -hmm. um it is however comparable to the xbox one x running in performance mode ha huh. So the, the old, the okay, of, actually, the old one, yes, this is interesting. Go. This actually brings up a really good point. O originally, when the game launched, the performance mode on those consoles was uncapped frame rate. And I think they actually removed that yes, uh, with the did. most recent patches. So everything was capped at 30. Uh, so that was gone. But it is back now on Series S, and it's pretty much like it was at launch on the Series X, mostly. <sighs> which is to say it really does not managed to hit the 60 fps target that, i mean it honestly surprises okay okay me. it's not it's not entire there, there are large sections i guess um, yeah you know i'm just i'm just surprised that we're seeing this kind of frame rate here in some of the more gnarly areas of the game not uh, even the more gnarly areas like even like uh there's that cutscene when you get into the school right that's never sure. been an issue for these systems, but even that's that, never been an issue on PC almost no, because it's like indoor. You don't see right? much even, but even here, it's still like right around the 45 to 50 FPS range. What? So it can't even it, like when you're done with the cutscene, like it's just at 56, 57. 
And then I as wonder... soon as you start running around, it, it drops below that. And, <sighs> you know, the last section in the forest at the end of that mission, it really gets into, like, the mid-40s and sometimes even lower. So it's not... Uh, it's really not optimal. And VR, again, it does help, but not quite enough for this mode. I, I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised... Uh, but I guess we should probably talk about the the one more positive uh, aspect here of the Xbox Series S, and that's the ray tracing mode, which you had a much better time with. So this is interesting then, because while it was the least performant mode on Series X, it's actually the most performant mode on Series S. And mm. I owe this to the lower resolution target. Uh, it seems to max out at 1080 again, and, mm. you know, with DRS, of course, but... Uh, it's capped at 30 frames per second, unlike Series X. So it is effectively equivalent to what we saw on the the Pro and the Xbox One the Xbox X. Xbox One X, yeah. And unlike those other modes, it's actually pretty darn consistent. So I would say it's not a huge problem to play in this mode. It feels pretty good overall. It's not flawless, but uh, yeah, it actually does deliver the kind of performance that you would hope from that and but of course that's with the caveat that you're at 1080p 30 30 max uh but again this is the series s which when you look at you know it is certainly G stronger in some areas but the gpu grunt is actually kind of below both series well it's it's yeah. kind of comparable to the last gen 1x and pro yeah. range like it's a little more efficient you can't just look at the teraflops, for instance. It doesn't tell the whole story, but it's kind of in that ballpark. Yeah, especially in back compatibility mode here, which is one thing I guess that you know Series S will suffer a little bit more than Series X due to having a smaller GPU. It's it's Definitely. just running like a less efficient version of its GPU. Is precisely, yeah. precisely. So the verdict then on this ray tracing mode is the best way to play on Series S. Performance mode is okay with VRR, but not quite perfect. If you don't have VRR, though, the performance and quality modes feel pretty unstable. Mm. So, bam. Uh, so, okay. yeah, the overall takeaway, then, from these two versions. Uh, I'd say Crisis Remastered has improved a lot since launch. It feels pretty responsive overall. Uh, the new addition of Ascension, some of the other game tweaks along the way are really nice. And, of course, uh, the console update is great, specifically if you're on a Series X. It's definitely far smoother than any of the prior experiences which is great it's just that the series s doesn't really uh stack up that well overall mm -hmm. and even series x you know it's good but it could still be a little bit better so that's it then what do you think i'm i'm just a little bit sad and i mean i'm really happy about these changes and i'm happy that these versions came out at all for people who are playing on console i mean Crisis is one of my favorite games. The more people that play it and respect it, <laughs> the happier I am. Uh, but I just wish that the resolution targets here were a bit more aggressive for dynamic res because I see almost no reason uh, GPU-wise why this should not be 60 FPS in the performance mode uh, or, or in the quality mode, essentially, on Series X here. Uh, it just needs a more dynamic resolution because the, the CPU is there to They're make so this close. game 60. They're so close. You They're know? so close. Uh, so maybe just another tiny patch adjusting these versions to, to get that up to 60 would be great. Yep, I think that's pretty good. But still, you know, if you want to play on a console, this is definitely the best way to play the original Crisis by far. Uh, and it really does get pretty darn close to that 60 FPS dream, which mm -hmm. was actually traditionally pretty difficult to achieve with the original 2007 Crisis, even on a modern yes. PC, yeah. as we know. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty good overall, and I still love Crisis, and I've played through that second mission so many times <laughs> for benchmarking, but I have this perfect rundown just going through it, but man, like, I look at that mission, and I'm still like, you know what, this is a, this is a brilliant game. Anybody that yeah. says Crisis was just about the visuals, look at that second mission, and just think about what they're doing with that space. Uh, yeah. It's an absolutely brilliant level. So it's so good. Just this is first like five or six missions of Crisis where you just like start off in an area, and then you have to get to the end of the level. But the way you get there is kind of your own decision. Filling out, you know, like mission objectives along the way. It's just so brilliant. I, I, I hope people can play this now and also respect that. Yep. But anyway, I think it's going to do it for this video. So thanks for joining me on this one, Alex. 
anytime, John. And if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and all that good stuff. And when the PlayStation 5 patch arrives, we will check that out too. And until next time, this is John and Alex signing off and saying, Auf Wiedersehen.